Electricity existed in nature long before the emergence of life on Earth. In my recent video, we saw how lightning could have been the mysterious force that provided the spark needed for life to begin its journey on Earth 4 billion years ago. In a way, you and I exist because of what lightning strikes did all those years ago. But how the hell did we humans manage to control this magnificent force called electricity? Today we use it in our homes, offices, everywhere. How exactly did we humans enslave those invisible electrons and made them do our bidding? Well, it seems you are in for a fascinating journey through human history. Hi guys, myself Prateek and you are watching Eclectic. For thousands of years, we looked at lightning as some kind of mysterious divine force controlled by some divine being. People from different parts of the world addressed this god of lightning by different names. The ancient Greeks called him Zeus, Germans called him Thor, and the Indians called him the Lord Indra. Ancient Greeks and Indians were the first to discover that static electricity can be created by rubbing two objects against each other. Up until the 70th century, static electricity tricks were performed merely to entertain people. Some called it magic, some called it satanic power. Electricity was limited to amusement. That changed in the 80th century when America's founding father, Benjamin Franklin, wrote down the 12 similarities between an electrical spark and lightning in his diary, such as the color of light, swift motion, conducted by metals, etc. Franklin was a polymath and a perfect person to turn electricity from a parlor trick into science. In the year of 1752, he conducted an experiment using a kite and a key on a rainy day. He flew a kite tied with a key during the thunderstorm. As he expected, the electricity from the storm clouds transferred to the key and he got a shock. Benjamin Franklin merely established a connection between lightning strikes and electricity. But still, electricity was far out of reach for common humans. There was no way of creating a steady electric flow of current here on Earth. How does electricity work? When electrons shift from one atom to another, they create electricity. In simple words, electricity is just a flow of electrons. Enter Alessandro Volta, an Italian physicist who discovered that particular chemical reactions can produce electricity. Based on that finding, he constructed the voltaic pile and produced a steady electric current and became the first person to create a steady flow of electricity. Volta created the first ever electric battery powered by a chemical reaction that enabled us to create a steady flow of electrons here on Earth. But still, electricity had no practical applications. Here comes another scientist who put the army of invisible electrons at the command of a human whim. Born and raised in a slum in the suburbs of London, a son of a blacksmith, Michael Faraday received no formal education beyond basic reading. His life is an inspirational story that teaches us that anything is possible if you have a strong will and willingness to work hard. I am currently working on a script based on Michael Faraday's life. It is about a book that helped Michael Faraday to rise above his circumstances, a book that gave him hope and is the reason why we can use electricity today. Stay tuned for that one. Faraday discovered practical applications for electricity. His discoveries led to the invention of the three most important machines in the history of mankind, electric motor, generator, and transformer. In 1820, Danish physicist Hans Christian Ørsted announced his discovery that the flow of an electric current through a wire produces a magnetic field around the wire. Michael Faraday was the only one who understood what it meant. Improvising on Austed's finding, he further discovered that if a magnetic pole is isolated, a current carrying wire would rotate around the magnet because the magnet exerts some kind of force on it. That was electromagnetic rotation, converting electricity into motion, which led to the invention of the electric motor. Faraday's experiment was the first ever electric motor. Without it, it would have been impossible to make the technological progress that we have made so far. Later, he demonstrated that you can generate an electrical current by moving a magnet in and out of the coil of wire, converting motion into electricity. That was electromagnetic induction, which further led to two more important inventions. One, generator that made electricity available on demand, and two, transformers that make possible the distribution of electricity from the national grid to your homes. Without transformers, you won't have electricity. Great inventions are worthless if they are not accessible to everyone. Michael Faraday found out the practical applications for electricity, but up until the 1880s, 
common people still had no access to electricity. I have studied energy for the last couple of years and have made numerous documentaries on it. Based on my knowledge, I have identified the three important stages in the evolution of all the energy sources within human civilization. First, we humans discover a source of energy such as fossil fuels, fire or electricity. The second step is to become able to generate it and control it. Humans discovered fire thousands of years ago, but if we had not learned to control it, we still would have been living in caves. The third and the final step is to distribute it to the masses to make it accessible to everyone, which takes a lot of years if not decades. Two scientists helped in bringing electricity to the masses and gave rise to commercial electricity. First came Edison who invented the first practical and commercial light bulb in 1879. Later he came up with the direct current distribution system to provide power to illuminate the first New York electric street lamp in 1882. But here is the catch. DC current systems are not efficient in transmitting electricity over long distances. Not far from Edison's offices in New York, the electrical wizard Nikola Tesla was working tirelessly to solve that problem. He designed alternating current power systems that made it easy to transport electricity over long distances. Tesla's AC systems are what we still use today around the world. Providing a better alternative to the DC current system put Tesla into direct competition with Edison. And there began the war of currents. You see. Edison was all about business and profits, while Tesla just wanted to do something good for humanity. To demonstrate that DC current systems are safer than AC systems, Edison started electrocuting animals at various public gatherings. But eventually, the truth prevailed and people understood that to make electricity accessible to everyone, the only option was to use Tesla's AC power systems. Still, progress in making electricity accessible to everyone remained slow. So slow that after the invention of the light bulb, most Americans still lit their homes with gas lights and candles for another 50 years. Even in 1925, only half of all homes in the US had electricity. It took even more time for developing countries to catch up. In my country, the tiny village called Lee Singh became the last Indian village to be electrified in 2018, just four years ago from now. Nikola Tesla did not stop after designing AC systems and convincing people that the future of electricity lay with AC rather than DC. In 1891, he made another important scientific contribution by inventing the Tesla coil, which laid the foundation for the development of wireless technologies and is still used today in radio technology. The next time you pick up your phone, remember to thank Nikola Tesla. A few more scientists worked really hard to harness the power of electricity, such as Scottish inventor James Watt who invented the steam engine, French mathematician Andrew Ampere who produced the theory of electromagnetism, and George Ohm who described the mathematical relationship between electrical current, resistance and voltage, and numerous others who were not given any credit for their efforts. Harnessing the power of electricity was not something one person could do on his own. While the concept of electricity was known for thousands of years, when it came to controlling it and making it commercially viable and accessible to people, several great minds spent their entire lives working on finding solutions. Their scientific contributions are the reason why you are getting to enjoy the conveniences provided by electricity. To economically support my efforts to create well-researched videos, you can either buy books from my affiliate links or send me super thanks. I thank my donors and patreons for making it easy for me to create well-researched videos. Smash that like button if you find my content useful. That's enough for today. See you in the next video.